Welcome to a recap of today's Python and Django live code hangout. Today we've been working on the Jerry Live companionship care project. We've got two features that are under development. Both of them are relating to user passwords. One is the ability to reset your password if you've forgotten it. And the other is the ability to change your password when you're logged in. Let's take a quick look at this um, task. <clears throat> We've gotten a contributor, Munyao Kelvin, has agreed to take this task. They have created a branch and opened up a pull request. Thank you very much, Munyao, for your work in progress. We did review the pull request at the beginning of this session. I'll just show you basically how a PR review works. And there it goes. Essentially, it's an issue with changes, with files that changed. And, uh, you know, we make these changes in commits, like little, little changes a little bit at a time. And a commit is just a bit of text that changed. It's uh, kind of describing what specifically changed, what was added, what was removed. So Munyao changed 17 files in this pull request and made six commits to those files. As a reviewer, my responsibility is to take a bird's eye view of the work and make sure it's following project conventions, maybe is not using excessive code or leaving out aspects, uh, overlooking details that could lead to bugs. As a developer, we often get so um, kind of fixated on the code right in front of us because it's very brittle. Uh, we get very fixated on it and work through basic things like semantics or how to solve the problem. And in doing so, we can miss the bigger picture. That's why pair programming and peer review are, I think, essential parts of the programming workflow. At least peer review, but in my book, Pair programming is, is uh, really important as well. So in the peer review process, my first um, kind of task is to take a high level look at the code just from a um, uh, kind of on the surface level, noticing if there's any um, things that are like unneeded, like code here that could be removed or um, important things like localization that could be overlooked when you're just trying to add a feature you could easily forget a detail like adding the translate tag around any user facing text so that we can localize everything so the reviewer can keep that can remind the person to do those in essence though this contribution pull request 72 for the reset password uh, it's working. It's a good solution. I think um, it follows a lot of the Django conventions. It leverages the Django framework. And the kinds of comments I was leaving were really low level, almost lint, but we have a linter for that. Things like spacing or using double quotes instead of single quotes, which is a Pythonic convention. The linter kind of catches those. I caught some other lint, like files that we didn't need or that we didn't need to put this new um, feature for account password reset in its own app. We could rather just put it in the accounts app, stuff like that, moving stuff around and some linting that, the, uh, that wasn't caught, mostly localization. So these are details again that are easy to overlook. Here's the current code. It's got some user facing text in English. We want to be able to translate that to other languages. So again, this is a good pull request. The main issues are really low level, like lint and organization stuff. We'll probably be able to merge this really soon. So again, uh, Munya, thank you very much for your contribution. I hope you take my um, comments here as uh, constructive and they're no, in no way um, you know, critical or criticizing your code. It's just part of the process. It helps uh, ensure and encourage higher quality in the code base. So, in parallel, <clears throat> I've been working on a password reset feature. And the password reset 
uh, is slightly more complex than just changing a password. And in both of these cases, though, there are edge cases and nuances that we, um, as product developers, we're developing a product. We probably don't want to have to consider, you know, things like hashing passwords or security or what the flow should be, how an email flow should happen when you're resetting your password. So for those types of things, we turn to a robust um, batteries included framework. Now, in our case, we're using Django, but there's other examples. Ruby on Rails comes to mind, Laravel, and the PHP ecosystem. Um, those are frameworks that I've encountered. So since we're in the Python ecosystem, Django is one of the top tier ones. So we're gonna just use its features uh, to the best of our ability. So as a working example, here's our app. Boy, that blasted out things. So we're gonna come back over here and make it a little dimmer and be able to view the code side by side with the changes. But more importantly, we're gonna to have to look down here in just a moment. So the use case here is somebody has forgotten their password and needs to log in. I get to the login screen, but I'm like, oh man, I've tried five passwords. What was it? Well, there's uh, typically a link for that. You say you forgot your password and you click the link. It prompts you to enter your um, email address in order to reset your password. So I'll send a password reset email. Then behind the scenes, Django, when I submit that form, runs a few validations and if they pass it'll send me an email now for the time being i'm just receiving the email down here in the terminal i've got it configured to send it only to the console as a follow-up task i'll have to think about how we will be handling emails in our beta version of this basically in the in the cloud or that's running on a server right now i'll have to do a little bit of research and i might do that on stream and show some of the um, steps that go into deploying an application in a cloud service and configuring environment variables for things like other service integrations in this case a transactional email service but here we are i've received this email in my terminal here subject password reset on 127.001 that's where my code is running on my local host stuff like that can be uh, improved later but right now the fact is that it works and i can change this template probably in a follow-up email uh, follow-up session so when you click on this link it opens in your uh, new tab in your browser and displays a template with a form enter your new password well let's just put in my super secret super secure password of my banking credentials set the new password all right so there there we go now i can log in with my new password essentially yeah and in the process of this um task it was i had some surprising difficulties the most of the difficulties was me not paying attention to deti uh, details which is probably characteristic of me but there was a i think i encountered a little bug in django nonetheless it was overall uh you know a good experience I, I didn't feel you know there's a when you're developing there's often stress and uncertainty and frustration so i admit feeling all of those uh, emotions <laughs> but uh i pulled through it I, you know you develop a little resiliency to that uh, oops so let's go ahead and take a look at the code and basically again i'm leveraging django as much as possible but there's some ways that i had to kind of deviate from the the django conventions uh, in the way that i organized files specifically um, that led to a few extra lines a few extra characters of code but it's it's uh, manageable and hopefully won't be too confusing for other contributors so what we have is an app called accounts in our project we have some other other apps here in our accounts app is where we have the model like the user model and we'll come to this in just a moment and we have views now typically you can define your own views 
But in this particular case where we're doing account related things due to the complexity of account related functions, sign in, sign up, sign out, reset password, Django provides those for us. So awesome. We're just going to use those. So first thing I do from Django contrib auth, it wasn't part of core at one time point, I guess it was contributed. I import all of their class base views. views. So that means I don't have to write any view code. So we, we didn't touch views.py, fortunately. Then we have a series of paths here. Now, previously, we've defined sign up and profile paths. Today, we touched on some templates relating to login. But here's the here's the paths we added. These are coming straight from the Django documentation pretty much I uh, ended up just going word for word what they said names, paths, uh, everything, template name, everything except um, the, the template directory. They keep um, the Django default location. It looks where these templates is in uh, registration slash template name. I had a weird experience with one of the views. It wouldn't find my um, template that was in registration slash template name, even though it had the, as far as I understood, the exact same name. Again, that could be a, a mistake I was making, but I'm pretty sure it was a, a I was very careful to copy and paste and make sure the name was exactly the same. So we defined a password reset view that renders the Django auth password reset view. So this is a route that renders the view that uses our password reset template. This is the exact pattern I went through down here and we'll take a look at the templates in just a moment. But we needed a password reset view. Then when you reset your password, so the first thing you see This is the password reset view. It prompts you to enter your email. Then, and this was a little bit confusing. Then it says password reset done. This was one that was throwing me a bit, just the semantics. My password hasn't really been reset, but an email has been sent. Renders this template. And the names are basically the same. Then in my email, if you recall, I get this funny uh, URL account slash reset slash you user ID in base 64 encoding. My user ID is number one, but in base 64, it's MQ. All right, cool. And then the token, this is like a randomly generated token, uh, probably has a temporary lifespan. I didn't write any of this code, so I don't know, but I trust that Django is mature enough and has been kind of battle tested enough that it, that the developers kind of have learned and know, learn from lessons and know what they're doing, which saves me from making mistakes. Cause I had a lot of mistakes I was making just in copying and pasting and overlooking details. Copy and paste mistakes are uh, very common. So don't feel, you know, there's no shame in the game, but when you, we do copy and paste code, also we want to pay attention to detail and kind of at least understand the code. And so, you know, we'll make mistakes. That's okay. So yes, when I click on this link that's generated with the, my user ID in this super secret code, it opens in a new tab. So yeah, there we go. And redirects me to set password view, which renders this. So that happens really fast, but uh, I click the link, it redirected me and renders this template, which is my enter new password template. We'll take a quick look at the templates in just a moment. I suppose I could have looked at them while we we're doing it. And then when I submit my new password, renders final view, password reset, complete view. So if you just stick with the naming conventions and everything, uh, you should be good to go. I recommend actually set putting the uh, uh, templates in, in a, a different folder like accounts in your templates folder. But you know you can keep them named the same as Django. Uh, again, it could have been maybe a typo I was making, but there was a weird gotcha I encounter. Gotcha I encounter. One kind of um, nuance in this pull request, I had to add a, uh, a field, an actual field to the um, 
user model. I'm inheriting here in our project from the abstract base user. And in the abstract base user, there's a property uh, is active. That's just used for whether or not a um, user has registered and clicks an activation link to send to their email typically. Now, there's a subtle nuance between class properties or model properties and fields in Django. And for whatever reason, when I tried to initiate the um, password reset form, I would input my email address and su submit the form. I couldn't find this field of a field like a proper field is active. So somehow it was excluding this is active base um, class property. Maybe it's something to do with um, my inheritance order. Come to think of it, I'm not sure exactly. And, but in order to move on, I just added that field as a proper field. I'll take a look at the inheritance order though. Now that I think about it. Cool. Uh, yeah, so that's the base user pi. All right, then the only other kind of change I made today was a setting that in order to experiment with these emails, I wanted to be able to see them and I don't have to set up an SMTP service. I just want to see them in my console. So in Django, you configure your email backend and it has a built-in mail backend that just puts it to the console. If you want to have a proper SMTP, you'll need a few other settings. But again, in this session, I'm working locally. In a later session, I'll be looking more to uh, conditionally uh, configuring in, like an SMTP service. If it were deployed, there would be an environment variable to toggle that. All right, let's take a quick look at the... Uh, the templates and I should really put these in the uh, <laughs> order that they are I kind of just open up in the order that they came in so here's the reset password template and they're very simple and straightforward uh, one brief note the login page now has a new link down here so we just added a link to this for password reset view so you click forgot password and it'll take you to that view point. Then it, it's just uh, regular Django template tags. I'm using crispy forms to automatically style the form elements with elements with bootstrap classes. We've got a title, some localized or internationalized text in the heading and body, a form with our CSRF token. That's being passed to Jang, uh, the Django Crispy Forms plugin that adds bootstrap classes and then a button that submits the form and has some explanatory text there and the success color to encourage people to click on it, I guess. All right, so we click that. Email set. Again, just a Django template tag, internationalization. We're extending our base uh, templates. We get some, you know, elements for consistency across the top navigation and another localized text. Very straightforward. Then this email template, uh, I didn't override. So this comes straight from Django core. I'll take a look into that later. Click the link, opens a new, new tab in our case. Enter new password. Again, just a Django template extending base HTML, loading internationalization, and crispy forms tags because we have a form here. Internationalized texts, form, CSRF, form class passed through the crispy filter button to submit, and some text to explain what the button's doing. And if I don't have a valid form input, you'll automatically get validation with crispy. This is nice. It saves us a few com lines of code. That was one thing I commented in the other pull request that if we just use crispy, we don't need really to do anything special with our forms. Validation comes back. The field is rendered. It highlights the one that was where there was an error. It saves a lot of time, especially in the prototype phase. Set new password. One more uh, template is rendered base HTML, internationalization, some internationalized text. Pretty straightforward at that point. Overall, it's not a, a huge um, 
pull request. I'm going to uh, commit these cha you know, changes. I basically changed 13 files. Uh, a couple of them are just renaming, and there's a migration in there. Uh, not a lot of lines of code. I'll add a link to the pull request when I open it, I suppose. I'm not sure if I'll be able to, uh, maybe in the description for this video. But that's it. I don't want to do any coding or other changes uh, during the summary section. This has been a, another Python and Django live code hangout. If you'd like to get involved with this project, stop by github.com slash jerrylife. And we're working in the companionship care. Thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you're doing well out there. Hey, thanks DeepMind, Tigran, Developer Pro, and Nice Naya for stopping by and hanging out during this session and chatting me up. Thanks for everybody else who uh, was viewing the live code session. And feel free to just comment or say anything uh, during the session or add comments to this video. I do really like uh, getting feedback and I appreciate the guidance that people are uh, giving me in the chat as well as the interesting questions you're bringing up such as language popularity or how to get a job or what kind of projects to work on so again thanks for stopping by the chat have a great day i hope you're doing well out there